Hi, in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at speeding up the startup time of Emacs using the early init file. Basically the early init file is read before the GUI starts. So we can put some stuff in there and try and rejig our setup to uh, make Emacs start faster. So what I'm going to do is actually open up Emacs and show you the startup time. So I'm just going to click there and if I come across to messages, what you'll see here is a little note here saying Emacs ready in 0 0.85 seconds with six garbage collections. So what I'm going to do is actually go through both the standard init file and the early init file. Uh, okay, so early init. So what we've got here is the early init um file um early dash init.el file which goes in the same directory as your init file and this is read before the gui sort of basically loads up and i pinched some of this code from a uh, the system crafters config so what we've got up here is we've got a garbage collection and what we've got down here is actually removing some of the GUI settings like the toolbar, the menu bar, the scroll bars. So we we set uh, we disable the startup message, which I think you know, like um, welcome to Emacs. Uh, we also set the initial scratch message to nil. So normally it will say, uh, you know, this is the scratch buffer or something. Now the next line, what we've got uh, that we've got down here is. Um, don't compact the font caches during garbage collection. And this is a setting from the Doom Mode Line site. Um, the Doom Mode Line is the little bar you can see down at the bottom down here. And this uses uh, sort of custom fonts to add the icons and stuff. And adding this setting basically improves the startup. Now, the next thing we've got down here is actually loading the theme. And on the System Crafters config, it just had load theme, sort of the name of the theme here, dash, uh, and then T. Uh, but that wasn't working for me for some reason. So I'm using this um, add hook, after init hook, um, lambda load theme, doom solarized dark. Um, so that seems to work in the early init. And then what we've got down here is setting the initial frame size to be maximized so whenever i start emacs it starts full screen basically and what we've got down here at the end is customize set variable initial major mode fundamental mode and what that does is when you start up emacs like go to the scratch buffer uh, it doesn't load up all the modes i believe um so it just would go to this fundamental load um, mode and basically that sets, makes things sort of load up a bit faster. So there's not that much in the early init, the garbage collection, hiding some of the UI elements, um, you know, hiding the scratch method, loading the theme um, and setting the window size to be full screen. And then what we've got here is, um, if I increase the size here, the this is the init.el file or normal, config for Emacs and up the top what we uh, what we've got here is a bit of code that runs a hook when Emacs starts up and prints a message uh, to the message buffer saying how long uh, it took for Emacs to start so this is useful so that we can actually measure um, how quickly Emacs starts now what we've got down here is the um, configuration for the packages this is just using the um, this isn't using use package or anything. This is just using the standard um, Emacs packaging system. So this is a list of all the packages that get installed. And if I um, remove a package, you know, from here and pull down the changes on another machine, uh, if I run, you know, if I install something new, it's going to prompt me to install a new package. Or if I've removed something and I do package auto remove, it will remove it. So this is good because it 
basically will keep everything in sync on various machines. So we've got the require package. Then what we've got is a general settings. So this is the backup settings. So I save all temp files in temp um, Emacs user UID. So instead of instead of having all the temp files in the Emacs directory, you can actually have them in slash temp. So hang on. So you'll see that Emacs 1000. And that's going to basically keep um, all the temp files created. So whenever you reboot, uh, it's going to clear out that directory. Uh, okay. Um, also, what we have uh, is a little bit of code so that it doesn't back up files that opened with sudo or doas. So if you've opened up a you know, file that's owned by root or something that you don't want to have backed up um, for security reasons. This will make sure that it doesn't back that up. And um, so we have those two blocks of code before this section here. Sort of save places, save history, global to revert mode. And the thing about Emacs com config, unlike other configs, is the the order of the bits of code matters to actually get things working, but also can have uh, an impact on the startup time. So sometimes you can be moving things around in your Emacs file and you, you know you move a block of code somewhere and you'll start Emacs and for instance you'll find that your theme's not loaded or evil mode's not enabled. And that's because um, certain things have got to be in a certain order for them to actually work. So unlike sort of standard um, configuration files for other things where you can just whack everything in and the order doesn't matter, it does actually matter in Emacs. So what we've got down here is the font. So this is where we're setting the font size. Um, what we're then doing is setting the uh, default face, the styling the tab bar background. So this is styling the tab bar up here. So tab bar refers to this whole bar along here. So that's set to this color. Then the active tab you can see here is got a sort of blue text, whereas uh, the inactive tab has got the text grayed out. So as you can see as I shift tabs, they're, they're highlighted. Next, what we've got down here is the doom mode line, which I covered in a previous video. So Required do mode line, you enable it. Um, this is where we can truncate the um, file name that appears in the buffer. So truncate except project. Um, what we've got here is we're hiding the time icon. So normally there's like a little calendar icon that doesn't do anything. We hide that. And also there's a little after the time, there's usually something that displays the load average. I oh, know there's the buffering coding. That's what it is. Normally, it will display um, the buffering coding, um, like UTF. So we disable that to clean that up. Um, next, we've got here is evil. So we set um, evil want key binding nil, and you need to set that before you um, initialize it. So again, the order of these things matters. So sometimes if you you know, move require this block of code above this bit here. Suddenly, when you start up Emacs, you find that evil mode's not working by default. So, again, the order of these things does actually matter. So that's evil, and then we've got some general request settings for like OB sync. OB sync is um, but a asynchronous um, processing of stuff. So it can normally if you're in Emacs and you can you can run a block of code from a source code block using org babel, um, Emacs will lock up um, until that block of code's finished running. What this does is obsync um, 
you can add a, uh, you can add a little bit of code to your source code blocks and it will basically run them in the background so that you can continue using Emacs and which key is obviously um, you know when you type keyboard shortcuts um, you get little prompts coming up down here we've got undo tree um, and these two little settings here are pinched from Sasatura's config and what this does is it actually shows timestamps in the undo tree and also a diff of the changes which is quite useful the next thing we've got down here is open with and this is a package that will allow you to set associations for file types to map them to a program to be opened with so you can see here i've got all these um, video file types and um, to be opened with mpv and all these image file types to be opened with NSKIV, which is a uh, new version of um, SXIV, which is a suckless application, it's an, a simple image viewer. And NSXIV has support for WebP animated images. And finally, what we've got is PDFs to be opened with the um, the, the Thora. Um, which is a sort of command line PDF viewer. Um, next thing we've got down here is the actual tab um, bar mode. So this is the tab bar mode up here, which showed in your previous video. Um, so I won't go over this too much. Um, but this is this little section here is adding the menu bar in the tab bar. Um, you can see this little um, alien icon. You can see as I click there. I've actually got the, the the menu coming up here and we hid the menu bar in the earlier net so this is how you can um, add a custom icon um, for the button basically set tab bar menu bar button and we've got this little unicode icon and I showed you how to insert that in a previous video you can insert unicode icons with control x8 return and um, type the name of the Unicode character you want to insert, like Alien Monster, or actually put in the Unicode code to insert the icon. So next, what we've got down here is some just some general settings for um, uh, using SecQ, uh, version control, backup, that sort of thing. Uh, pin tree mode, that's for um, like entering GPG, and things like that, I think, from memory. Display the time in the mode line, hide the load average. So what we're doing here is we're setting the time format just to be hours and minutes. Um, and we display um, time default load average nil. So typically after the time, you'll get like a little thing for the load average will be like, you know, system load. It'll be like 0 0.1 or whatever. and you don't need to see that so we can just hide the load average using display time default load average nil and then finally after that we enable display time mode um, we've got use short answers here so uh, when it prompts you for yes or no you can just type y or n turn off the blinking cursor suppress the large file prompt follow sim links um, case insensitive search I had I, before I had this set to something like was it p completion or something and it was giving me an error so i think it's now changed to completion ignore case um then we've got like use space instead of tabs um revert uh diode and other buffers so i think this is um if you change something um it kind of automatically reverts it i forget and then EWW browser width is the built-in browser in Emacs. Built-in web browser and you can actually set the, the width of the display so it doesn't display um, stuff, you know, like lines going across the full screen. You can actually set a width for it. Uh, we've got the dictionary server specified, company, I do mode, edif. And then we've got the global um, key bindings here and one other thing I, I will mention is I actually figured out how to have the line numbers and the percent here but um, hidden in V terms so I'll get to that in a sec but these are the 
global key bindings for like um, VTerm, uh, rename a VTerm buffer, a VTerm yank primary. So VTerm has a different way of copying and pasting. So if you're if you've got the primary and the secondary clipboard, what I found is if I'm copying something um, and pasting it into the terminal, I do Control C P and that uh, yanks stuff from the primary buffer and then paste it in. We've got magic status, um, hippie command. Yeah, this is um, useful. So if you press, if you're typing something, uh, if you press uh, meta. Uh, forward slash it will auto complete the word and there's a better um which and this uses a default command but you can actually set it to something called hippie expand um which is actually better because it will expand stuff from various sources so let me just see if i can do that so if i type uh, just start typing de if i start typing de hang on let me just increase the files size here and I do uh, meta uh, forward slash what you'll see is it actually will go through and cycle through things it will actually cycle through elist functions um, and, and also sort of um, sort of your files so like uh, if I type um, downloads like documents downloads do Molun. so it will actually cycle through stuff so that's an improvement over the standard um, expand which can't remember what it um, what it's using in the background but hippie expand um, has got more features so global set key remap the uh, abbreviation expand hippie expand and then you can run meta forward slash and keep pressing that and it will cycle through where it gets the completions from so from like as i showed you like desktop downloads documents that sort of thing and then through to elisp functions and um completions in the actual document uh, we've got some defined keys down here for um, I edit org mode and stuff like that. And um, what we've got here is V term. So, oh, no, it's not what I wanted to do. Okay. So we've got V term here. Um, so let me just switch back to this section. V term always compile module T. What this does is vterm when there's a sort of new update to vterm it will sort of prompt you do you want to download and compile it yes or no and setting vterm always compile module to true um will basically just automatically download and compile it without prompting you and then what we've got here is the vterm buffer name string and what that allows us to do is rename the uh, vterm buffer automatically so as you can see here it's automatically showing the um the process here it's vterm and then like the current directory or the process that's running and that's done with cshrc i showed you in a previous video do, 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 do. where is it yeah this section here Line sixty, case term and x term rxvt uh, pre command, pre exec, and because v term has got its term set to x term two five six, it will pick up this block of code, and you can see here it's saying v term bat if I exit um, that is now showing the current directory. So that block of code in our zsh config together with vterm buffer name string will actually automatically rename the vterm buffers to show the current directory or the uh, running process then after this we've got uh, vterm and evil this is a block of code for um, making sure that 
evil and VTerm work okay. Now this bit down here, VTerm mode, hide lum line numbers and position. What you can see down here in the mode line is the line number and the percentage of the uh, the document where the cursor is basically. So you can see I move up and down and you don't need that in the terminal. So I don't want it to show L2 and then say all. It's just distracting. So what I found is to, to set this, we're using set Q local. And so this only applies in this kind of function. It doesn't apply to anything else. If you just use set Q, it will apply it globally. So we set the line number mode to nil. So the line number is this one down here, showing the current line. And the next one is the percentage. And it took me a while to figure out what the thing is. So setting set Q local do mode line percent position nil. What that will do is when we run add hook v term mode hook and then no line num, which is that function. So we add a hook for v term mode, which is the terminal, and get it to run this function so that it is basically sets line number mode to nil and do mode line percent position to nil. And what that does is, as you can see here, we've got the line numbers, the percent position in v term, we don't have those. So it took me a while to figure out how to um, the correct thing here, but basically we now got line numbers and the percent position in, you know, our uh, text mode basically, but in the terminal mode, they're disabled. Uh, what we've got next is Magit and this block of code, what it will do is it will sort of delete the um, some of the magic buffers after you've run magic. So typically when you run magic, the Git interface in Emacs, it creates a load of buffers and this will sort of clean up some of them um, after it's been run. What we've got next down here is Dyad. Um, so it was Dyad is the, the file manager. Um, so yeah, <laughs> actually just Hang on a sec. Um, not let me um for some reason it's gone big. Hang on a sec. Uh, okay, so here's um Dyad. And what you can do is create a keyboard shortcut that will toggle showing um all the hidden files. So oops, hang on. So what we've got here, and click back, uh, is using Dyad X, um, kill the current buffer when selecting a new directory display. So what this does is, every time you open a new, switch your new directory in Dyad, it will delete the previous buffer because what happens otherwise is, every time you're navigating through different directories, it's going to open a buffer for each of those directories. So you'll end up with millions of diet buffers for all the directories you visited. So what this does is it basically sets it so that there's only one diet buffer. So every time you open a new um, directory in diet, it kills the previous one. So you're only left with, um, so one sort of buffer there. Okay, so hang on, we'll go back here. Um, yeah, the diode listing switches. So I showed you in this previous, in another previous video, what this will do is this will set listings to be um, in the correct order. So if you have say a list from one to a hundred of files, Typically, what will happen is by default, it will like list them, you know, one, ten, you know, it won't list them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to a hundred. It will list them like one, ten, you know, two, twenty and all that kind of crap. So what this will do, these listing switches, dash A, H, L, V will ensure you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way to a hundred. This setting down here 
is um, to hide um, dot files um, and also the Firefox dot temp um, directory that you normally get um, with the snap version of Firefox. So the snap version of Firefox creates a um, Firefox temp directory in your downloads folder and using this bit of code you can actually hide that um, in Dyad and I've shown, shown you that in a previous video. Uh, you can also set it to be hidden in uh, the shell as well which is useful because when you're on the command line and you're trying to say like play a video um, in your downloads folder and you type mpv tab you don't want it auto complete into firefox temp so um, there's a way to hide that in the shell as well we can set um, recursive delete and copy always um, this is the section for um, hired hired long listings by default so that's how i sort of hired um hide um the long listing so that I get a clean um, looking diode where it just shows the actual directories. Uh, we can also hide the async um, output buffer. So um, as I mentioned, there's a thing called asynchronous um, running of commands so they can run in the background. And what it normally does is it creates a new buffer showing the progress of the asynchronous command and you can hide it uh, with this bit of code. Uh, what we've got down here is tramp. So we set the default mode for tramp, um, set it to parse our um, ZSH config file so it picks up all our uh, servers that we've got listed. And this block of code here, um, we've with eval afterload, tramp, set environment, shell, user bin, shush. There's a issue with using the ZSH shell uh, with tramp and it not accepting the password that you put in so um, if you've got zsh and you've got tramp set up there was an issue where for some reason it just wouldn't let you put in the password properly um, uh, it just hang basically so you don't need um, the zsh shell um, to be used with tramp so um, to get around this issue, we just set the shell type to be um, user bin sh, and that solves that problem. Uh, and what we've got here is a tramp backup directory bit of code. And what this uh, does is it works with a bit of code up the top so that it um, backs stuff up to the temp directory, I think it was. Um, then what we've got here is um, org mode, you know, require org these things, set your org agenda files um, you can set um, org mode has something called org babble where you can have blocks of code inside source code blocks and you can actually run them and it'll normally prompt you do you want to run this bit of code yes or no and you can actually um, disable that warning uh, anything else in here that's interesting Oh yeah, this one here, um, all source to use the current window. So if you, if you edit a source code block, you can edit it by doing control C, um, single quote. Normally that would open up in a new Emacs window. What this does is it just sets it to use the current window. Um, next thing down here is to not show images full size in org mode. So uh, if you've got like a massive image and you try and open it in org mode, um, it will, you know, be all zoomed in and everything. You can, um, you can set it to be a certain width so it doesn't open up absolutely huge. And we've got asynchronous tangle. So this was the um, asynchronous um, running of commands. So what this is useful for is you can tangle files so you can, um, write files out to particular locations, um, uh, which is how I manage all my doc files. So you can have a source code block and say, write this source code block out to, you know, dot config emacs init dot el. And what this um, org export 
asynchronous does is it allows the tangling to be done in the background so it doesn't make Emacs hang. Uh, then we've got all capture templates, refile, um, just general stuff. Um, all go from file. So this is um, how you can set a file association for different links in all documents that open, you know, in a particular program like MKVs will open in MPV or images will open in NSKIV. Um, okay, and this is how you load the, um, the languages and you can specify which languages to load with org babble. Um, so you, you do this so it doesn't, you just specify the languages you want to load rather than loading them all up. Um, We've got a little thing down there for mail mode. Okay. This one is make um, files with a shebang executable when you save them. So the shebang is the, um, you know, hash exclamation mark bin sh. So if you have one, if you create a file with a shebang and save it, it will automatically make that file executable. Uh, company mode um, then we've got visual line mode um, and h1 line mode so you can see here I've got h1 line mode so this is the highlighting the current line here and what we do is we set that so that it basically only works in prog mode hook and text mode hook and so this is the text file so you can see we have the highlighted line here but in return obviously we don't want to have a big line coming up every time we use the terminal so that's why we only enable it for these two modes down here and then we've got fly check and and this is um settings for mpv so that you can actually there's an mpv package and you can actually control mpv from within emacs and what you can also do is basically sort of move through Emacs like frame by um, move through a video in MPV frame by frame, and you can actually do things like insert the current playhead position into a document. And the reason this is useful is because I've got scripts that will allow you to take timestamps from a video and then chop that video up. So what this bit of code enables you to do is actually control a video being played in MPV move forward backwards and um, and if I just come down here to um, Hydra so this is Hydra so this is a set of keyboard shortcuts that work with MPV and what allows me to do is press F2 and then into this mode and then I can use the keyboard shortcuts listed here to actually move backwards and forwards uh, in the video just like you would if you had um, uh, MPV focused I can pause it I can kill it I can take screenshots I can insert the playhead position so using this block of code um, allows me to actually skip for a video using Emacs to control the video and actually insert the timestamps into an org document, take all those timestamps and then run some scripts and basically extract all those clips from the video. So it's a really good way of actually being able to go through and sort of chop up a video. So finally, what we have down here is the garbage collection. So that's sort of reorganizing my um, emacs init.el uh, with the early init.el. The reason I did this was because I've got an old MacBook Air from 2011, which got about four gig of RAM, and Emacs was taking a really long time to start up uh, on that machine. Um, so that's why I wanted to have a look at sort of how I can actually get Emacs to start up a bit quicker. Um, hang on a sec. 
So let me come across to the earlier net again. So garbage collection. We removed the UI elements like the uh, menu bar, the scroll bars, disabled the start the scratch startup message, compact the um, font caches, load the theme, set the window size, and then finally the initial major mode. So if I come into scratch here, you'll see it says fundamental. So what that does is it sort of stops it loading up loads of packages um, when Emacs sort of starts up. And then in the init.el, we've got the Emacs ad hooks, Emacs startup. So if I get my cluster of messages, uh, I'd have to restart it, but it basically show you the actual, uh, where we go, Emacs ready in 0 0.85 seconds. So that's printing out the startup time in the message buffer. Then again, we've got the packages that we've got installed using, um, you know, package install. Got the general settings where we uh, set all the temp file to be saved in uh, slash temp uh, Emacs UID. Don't backup files open by sudo. Um, save place mode. This is, it will basically save the cursed position when you save the document. So when you save a document and you reopen it, the cursor position will be exactly the same place as you let um, as you last um, had it when you saved the document. Okay, um, we've got the fonts, you've got the tab bar background, zoom mode line, again, where we truncate the project name here. Uh, Hide the time icon, don't display the buffer encoding. Got evil. We've got the general required stuff like um, uh, which key, and again, undo tree, uh, undo tree visualizer, timestamps, and diff. So that will actually show you the timestamps and a diff um, of the changes that have been made. Uh, we've got open with again. So that's if you're in things like Diod. Uh, what that will do is when you click on a video in Diad, it will open it with MPV or an image will open with your image viewer. So that's a really other, that's another useful program. We've got the tab bar mode again. And remember, this is how we can have the the menu in the tab bar. So I showed you in a previous video and how you can actually insert your own custom Unicode um, icons. General stuff for set queue. Um, again, this was the, the time, so you want to remove the time icon and the load average. That's what we do. Um, time uh, load average nil. Uh, anything else I wanted to go over the V term thing again. So the V term was the buffer name string. So remember, always compile. So you don't get prompted it will do it automatically the buffer name string so that we have the um current working directory or the process name so if i change this to like newsboat you'll say you'll see it now says v term newsboat and also v term newsboat down here and this was the um thing the new thing i was working on is actually hiding the uh, line number and the percent position so those are the two things we create a function no line number set queue local instead of set queue so that only affects this particular mode then we add hook return mode hook and then run the function and again what that does is that will hide the line numbers and the percent position down there again magic cleaning up the buffers um dyad so we can um, toggle hidden files with um, control X meta O. So again, that will um, toggle showing the hidden files, recursive copy and delete. Um, the tramp, the tramp fix for um, avoiding ZSH problems with the prompt. And again, we've got the org mode stuff down there. Um, 
some ad hooks, um, making uh, making the file ex executable, the um, the highlight and the line numbers only in particular modes, and again MPV, which is um, absolutely fantastic. Um, you have to style it up in a particular way in Emacs. You actually start MPV from within Emacs, and then you can control um, MPV using Hydra. It's really cool. So you can actually just press F2 and then, um, you know, use the Vim keys like H, J, K, and L to go forward and backwards in the video, just like you had MPV focused. And so that was that was the Hydra I created down there. So I'll put links to all this under the video and. Um, Again, this is the early init file information on the uh, Emacs wiki. Basically saying what you can put in there and there's some things that you should just go and whack everything in the early init file. And oh, come back. So this is the early init file, uh, my early init file on GitHub that I've just been showing you there. That section there. And here's the um, init.el with all these bits in here so I'll put links to all this under the video and hope that helps you get started with using the early um, init dot um, el file with emacs and helps you sort of organize stuff because as I said uh, you, you need to put things in a kind of group things together um, in emacs so like um, all this doom mode line stuff um, you know, if you were to have the required do mode line below this section and you'd find the icons weren't showing up and things weren't working. So not like a regular config um, you might be used to where you can just whack everything in and the order doesn't matter. You've got to sort of put things grouped together and have, you know, particular things above other things. And sometimes the only way to find out why something's not working is actually by uh moving the you know the blocks of code about and then you'll find oh yeah it's working because as i said sometimes you'll move things about in your emac config and you'll start up emacs and you'll have your theme not loaded or evil modes not working so it's a good idea to keep all these things kind of grouped together um and sort of that that way you can see you know what options are um causing issues if they're not working and also funny enough actually moving these things about does actually impact the startup time so if you've got a slow startup time you know, what you can do is actually try moving these kind of things about um in an effort to get them started uh, a bit quicker so if i come back to um emacs what i'll just do is um, exit that and kill that and then kill emacs p kill emacs so now if i start emacs up um fresh there we go and then open the messages uh, you can see uh emacs ready in 0 0.85 seconds six garbage collections getting some errors um from packages um i haven't got any of these settings in my emacs config um so i'm not quite sure where those errors are from uh, but on this is a startup on uh, Dell XPS 15 with was it 16 gig of RAM um, whereas on a 2011 MacBook Air with 4 gig of RAM the startup is um, double this it's about um, a bit under two seconds about one and a half to 1.8 seconds Whereas before it was taking like five or six seconds to start up before I started um, juggling things around. So I'll put links to all this, um, the section on the Emacs wiki and um, my early init file um, and init file. And System Craft has, has got a good uh, section on this. And this is where I pinched uh, some of this bit of code from uh, from the System Crafters config and added in some of my own stuff and um, I said I couldn't use their load theme um, example so I was doing it this way but it seems to work um, and again we can set the initial frame to be maximized so it does seem to actually um, kill it again 
There we go. And if I open another one, there's another, there's another one. So they, they start up pretty quickly um, using this early init. Um, let me just see if I can make that smaller and open another one. So you can see, you get this weird thing on Wayland where when you put it full screen and then come out full screen, it goes small. But as you can see, Emacs full screen um, starts up pretty quickly. That's with the daemon running. If I quit it now, takes doesn't take that long. Okay, yeah, zero point eight four seconds. Oh, so it's got faster during the uh, demo. So if you're having issues with Emacs being a bit sluggish, um, hopefully some of those um, the settings um, for things like the Doom mode line, putting stuff in your early init, garbage collection, um, might make Emacs um, start up a bit faster for you and you know go through and organize stuff and kind of group it together um, because otherwise what tends to happen is you you know you get started with Emacs and you start putting stuff more stuff in your config and more stuff and it gets a bit disorganized and you can't find all the things that are related you know so you you may have stuff at the top of the file and and then you you know put new stuff in and then it's not you know something goes wrong and you can't figure out what the issue is so it's it's best to keep all these set queues and um, requires um, like for for example dyad here because um, I'm using dyad x and I have things that reference dyad x below here if I had this required dyad x below this block of code um, it wouldn't work so the order of these things does matter and it's just something you're going to have to play around with, but it helps to group things together so you can actually see all the functions uh, for that particular package or mode um, all together. So if there's any issues, it's easier just to you know move these things about here rather than moving blocks of code here and then up to the top of the file. Um, so hopefully that helps you um, get things a bit organized and um, the early in it's definitely worth a look because it um, helped um, improve the startup on um, my old MacBook Air. So that's all for now and I'll put links to all this under the video.